Hello everyone, and welcome back to another CMBX review. Damn it, I'm not ready. There comes a time in every man's life where he has to come to terms with the concept of how cool he is. Now, I feel like the concept of coolness is pretty nonsensical and rather childish. It has no real value or obtainability. Therefore, in reality, we're all as cool or uncool as anyone else. But ask yourself, are you a badly modeled Patrick Star riding a surfboard level of cool? Didn't think so. I know you all tuned in to watch me review SpongeBob's Surf and Skate Road Trip, but the fact of the matter is, I'm just not cool enough to do it really. I mean, listen to what's written on the back of the box. Grab your board, carve it up, go sponge wild. Do I look like a sponge wild type of guy? I mean, it even requires the connect. How cool can you get? Well, I like to avoid clickbaiting you guys, so I guess I'm gonna have to work out some way of getting cooler. I looked up cool in the dictionary. All I found was this police sketch, which concerns me. So many books, yet none that can really teach me the ways of the coolness. Well, just like all young people of this day and age, just about any answer can be found on the internet. So, there we go. Let's give us a call. Alright, is this Cool Guys Enterprises? Why yes, welcome to Cool Guy Enterprises. My name is Zach, registered Cool Guy number 92 of our Cool Guy development process. How may I help you today? Um, hello. Well, you see, I'm in a bit of a- Pickle? Mm, yes, I understand. You're trying to review a Spongebob game that you simply aren't cool enough for, and now you need the assistance of Cool Guys Enterprises to aid you in gaining coolness at a faster than average pace so that you can avoid clickbaiting people with a review that so far hasn't actually reviewed the game. Does that sound about right? Well, that's, that's very specific. So we'll be sending you a trial VHS of the How To Be Cool series, hosted by Level Von Lichtenstein. That, that would work, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, would you like to sign on to our monthly newsletter and weekly shipments of both bath salts and houseplants? Is this... is this the same company? Would you like to fill out a survey on how you found this experience? Uh, no, no, I've, I've kind of got to, um... Question number one. In the instance of finding yourself in a dangerous situation, would you call Cool Guys Enterprises in order to get help, or would you try to get out of the dangerous situation yourself? Well, I didn't really want this, but we've got it now. Uh, yeah, so, Cool Guy VHS. Uh, I suppose I'll have to do... The, the next question is how do I make it... go? Um... What do you think it would look like if, uh, you know, Spongebob, he, you know, was... The absorbent, yellow, and porous manifestation of the sins of his forefathers! Whoa, whoa, what do you mean that's weird? Dude, that's really not that weird. Wait, are, are you recording? What's up my dudes and welcome back to this 47 part series on how to be cool. My name is Leopold von Lichtenstein, you can just call me Larry. Now last week we went over uh, how to deal with a difficult situation, such as being cool in a funeral situation and also being called out on Twitter. But this week we're going over my top three ways of being cool. Now let's just get into it. Step one, in an uncomfortable situation. For example, having an argument with a customer at work, or being peer pressured by friends, or being involved in a government cover-up to hide the fact that Vietnam was a, a, a cut, no, cut that. The best thing to do in that type of situation is to just moonwalk out of it. The moonwalk is a globally understood symbol of coolness and boldness. It'll get you right out of that situation. Step two. If you ever feel threatened or intimidated by someone, just challenge them to a dance battle, my dudes. And remember to follow VHS number 21 on the sickest dance moves that can absolutely kill it in a dance-off. Now remember, moonwalks are not accepted in 90% of dance-offs, okay? So you can't double dip on steps here, okay? Now in the instance that their dance moves are just that much sicker than yours, just knife them. It's really that easy. Step three. Now this is the really important one. Okay, so what you need to do is steal the declaration. No, 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 no. I was just wanted to get into good bit. Oh, man. 
Okay, well, I guess there's nothing that can be done about it. We've got to go through it. The deed must be done. But, uh, okay, if, if I'm going to do this without being a full cool guy, I at least want some, some details. The lay of the land. The history of the land. There's only, there's only one person I can think to do that. It's me. The joke is I'm wearing glasses. So it makes me look like I know what I'm talking about. The Kinect, known as Project Natal during its development, was Microsoft's answer to the Wii and its massive success with the less hardcore market. Nintendo, with a single swing of the Wii remote, was able to get people who had never and never would pick up a controller in their lives, get them dancing, playing tennis and awkwardly controlling SpongeBob as he escaped from a giant plankton. The Wii was a colossal success and Microsoft wasn't about to miss out on that market. Releasing in November of 2010 for the Xbox 360, the Kinect sold 35 million units from its release to 2017. But it's important to know that many Xbox 360s were later sold in bundles with the Kinect, and also the Kinect came packaged with the Xbox One. So that statistic is unlikely to reflect on the overall success of the Kinect, but more on how Microsoft included it. But at the end of the day, the Kinect was successful and was in the hands of a lot of people. It never saw the wildfire success of the Wii and also very quickly became an object of mockery, due in part to Microsoft's constant pushing of the peripheral onto its more hardcore fan base, like making it have forced integration into the Xbox One, but also for its series of lackluster games. Now, it of course had a good few experiences, but none felt overly enhanced by the Kinect. Often they felt hindered or even muddied by the inclusion, such as Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, which included an entire mode that was only playable with the Kinect. To be fair, that was a pretty fun mode, more enjoyable than the rest of the game at least, but it wore thin quickly. Many of the Kinect titles were quickly labelled as lazy, poorly developed cash grabs, and much of the greater Xbox fanbase moved on from the Kinect pretty quickly, even though companies still pumped out titles for the Kinect for whatever audience was left after the immediate release. SpongeBob's Surf and Skate Road Trip was born under these circumstances. Developed by Blitz Games, and published by THQ only two years before its closure, the game released one year after the Kinect itself, in November of 2011. Very little is known about the development of this game. Most websites just have copy and paste information from Wikipedia. The reason for this is most likely due to a short development time and very little advertisement or info releases. Blitz had already released four games in the same year as Surf and Skate. It's unlikely with the amount of manpower that Blitz games had for that development to have been overly long, and the game reflects that concept in its quality. I wasn't able to find any hard data on how well the game sold, but taking into consideration how soon after THQ went under, and this is also the second last proper game Blitz developed before it started making Wake Up Disney and Shrek Alarms, it's unlikely the game was a huge success. The game received mixed reviews, like many Kinect games of its time. A 5 out of 10 was the most consistent score, and by many it was considered to be just a time sink for kids. Something to keep them busy for a few hours before they too eventually got bored. Common Sense Media stated that the game was fun, but forgettable. This comment reflects greatly on the modern SpongeBob fanbase's perception of this game. Many either don't know it exists, or only know a small amount of information, or saw a trailer of it on YouTube. The game is, more so than nearly any other title under the SpongeBob IP, forgotten. SpongeBob's Surf and Skate Road Trip shows you just how much of a quality experience it is right from the get-go. You enjoy a wonderful PowerPoint presentation of SpongeBob and Patrick explaining the plots of some of the worst SpongeBob episodes ever made. And I really don't know how it's possible, but these games always try their hardest to make me question if any of these voice actors can actually act. Because I love these guys with all my heart, but this doesn't even sound like Patrick. Do I need to sit down too? No, Patrick. I was sure they had Clancy Browned Patrick for a minute there, but apparently not. But the carnival is closed. Anyway, none of the other characters talk because, come on guys, we're working on a two-day deadline. What do you want from me? We kidnapped Tom Kenny for this role anyway. We didn't have time to do the rest. But hey, the ransom money helped pay for half the game. After the presentation, thank you everybody for coming, I'll be emailing out the minutes later today, we are into the game. So Surf and Skate Road Trip is, well, it's a Kinect game. Uh, 
like your Connect Adventures and so on, where you play as either SpongeBob or Patrick in two choices of swimmers. Hmm, is this like Mass Effect? Is this going to affect the ending? You play through a bunch of levels, either surfing or skating, collecting coins, making jumps, catching air, and racking up points. Earning that. <laughs> now, skating and surfing are more or less the same, which is a shame as I was hoping for skating to be much more different, but no, it's basically the same. How could you possibly have known that? Oh, it's Blitz Games. What are you talking about? Blitz has always been a company of quality tu- never mind. Welcome to Atlantis! Now for controls, you position your feet with one towards the back and one out the front to go straight. Good luck, you'll need it. Then you take a big old step to the left to go left. This is fine, it's comfortable. Then a big old step to the right. This doesn't feel comfortable. The back leg needs to stay where it was, but now your legs are crossing over and I feel like I'm overbalancing whenever I do this. Now, some could argue it's because I have the balance of a goose who's eaten a kid's packed lunch and now is getting on a skateboard to try and escape. But it's not just that. It's mostly that. Going left just feels like you're doing a weird lunge. Going right feels like I'm about to fall over. Why can't I just lean one way or the other? Like, seriously, the Kinect is a potato. It, it ain't advanced, okay? If I so much as breathe, it tells me it can't see me anymore and gets all pouty. Why would you make your life harder, Blitz, and do this whole thing of putting your feet in the right places when the Kinect can't even tell those types of details? Also, it's not even allowed to see my feet because otherwise it will get angry about its placement. I mean, the feet placement isn't something the camera is even picking up. And if you move far enough back for it to see all of you, it complains you're too far away. Just let me lean. Just let me lean left or right to go in those directions. It seemed so obvious that I was instinctually doing it during the loading screens while the game was starting. Also, do you want proof of how bad the controls are? Here you go. Now you might think, oh, hey Chester, you're catching some mad air, racking up them points. <laughs> I was trying my damn hardest to go right this whole time because I wanted to get that damn coin. I didn't want the air, I wanted the coin. But as I said, the connect is a potato. Question number 31. Have you ever tried to swallow a tennis ball? Or would a cool guy have an easier time doing it? I, I don't want, okay, to answer your survey. I'm calling to say that your VHS broke, okay? It didn't give me the third tip. I'm like halfway through this review and I'm just busking, okay? I don't, I, I'm making it up as I go along. Like, I need that third step. Well, that's mighty unfortunate. Did you perhaps purchase our three-week warranty service for $599? You have a warranty service for a free trial? Oh, there's nothing free about being a cool guy. $1,200, please. $200 for the repairing of the VHS, and $1,000 because you kept interrupting my survey, and it's really annoying me. Now, it's not all bad. Wait, yeah, kind of is all bad. So the game broke several times for me. My Xbox kept saying that it was basically unreadable. Oh no! I understand why you're doing this, but you don't need to lie to me. Just say you don't want to play it. It's all good, I understand. Now, I've seen some scratch discs in my day. This disc is very, very much not scratched. My copy of Halo 4 is practically broken in two, and that damn thing always worked. So I don't know what's up with this disc, but boy howdy, I wasn't prepared to buy a second copy to test it out. Yeah, it's only like 15 bucks, but it's the principle of the thing. So I was only able to experience the first few hours of the game before it kept breaking, so I'll be using some gameplay from Libby Long Plays to show some more of the late game stuff. I wasn't able to record. Now there is the chance that at the end of the game, the part I wasn't able to play in this very short game, that the stars may have aligned and the game may have become somewhat better. It's definitely an argument, but I doubt it. So playing as either SpongeBob or Patrick doesn't affect gameplay at all. Once again, come on people, we're operating on a two-day time frame to make this game. It makes me kind of question the point of having two playable characters in the story mode if the only difference is to hear the same four catchphrases repeated over and over. No time for scenery now. So yeah, they are the same, but you can pick from different boards that have slightly different stats, but it really doesn't change anything. It's more or less a model change with a 5% difference in speed or whatever. But at the end of the day, you can't control the board no matter which you pick, so there isn't really a difference. There are a few different modes, such as collecting enough points, going through the gates, aka okay, ring challenges from the movie game, except if you were trying to play that game with a toaster for a controller. There are also a few other modes, but you won't be playing long enough to bother with them, so let's move on. There are also these things like from Psych that you've got to stay on. 
You have to lean left or right to stay on the bar, and if you fall over, you lose an absolutely minuscule amount of points. But hey, look how easy leaning is in this game, and how well the Kinect can pick it up. It's crazy! You can also perform different tricks and stunts which afford you different points, none of which worked for me when I tried to do them, like running your hand in the water or grabbing your board. They just didn't work for me. I shall count that on my height and not on the game. Nah, I'ma count that on the game. Now something this game is sorely missing is power-ups, abilities, items, anything to break up the gameplay and let you have some fun. I was thinking it would be even fun just to have levels like in Jimmy Neutron vs Jimmy Negatron where you race against giant waves. That would give some of the levels a sense of urgency and fatality which is sorely needed. There are time challenges which I suppose add a form of fatality and urgency but nothing that is directly involved in gameplay. Here's the absolute biggest problem with the gameplay of Surf and Skate. Ignoring the fact that moving around in the menus makes me want to throw out my connect. Seriously, picking Patrick's shorts becomes a much more intense thing when it takes so long to move your damn cursor over to it. Are you sure that's what you want to pick? The, the, no backsies. No, the biggest problem is the fact you aren't really penalized for anything. I spent this entire level just riding the left hand wall for nearly the entire time, just getting air bonuses. There is no skill required in this game. Hitting objects scores you points rather than losing points. And if you do lose some points here and there, it's such a small amount, it's basically wasn't worth being taken away in the first place. A game I played heaps as a kid was 1080, a snowboarding game that actually required skill. If you wanted to land a jump, nay even beat the easiest level, you need to learn how to land, and landing was hard. You'd always be taking damage, landing on your face, losing on the easiest levels. But then you actually start to learn what buttons to press, what angle to land on. Before you know it, you can actually compete. Then it's about tricks and working out how to go fast. It's a game that I still play every now and again because it's a good, honest challenge. This game has broken controls, but I still managed to get nearly three stars by hugging a wall. I don't lose points, I don't hit stuff and get hurt, I don't have a health bar. It is literally a passive experience that you are forced to stand up for. The only challenge comes from the absolutely terrible controls that just removes your ability to react. The time trials, if my disc would ever let me play them, would be an absolute pain because you have so little control over how you move. Any trace of difficulty you encounter is not by design, it's because the game is broken. Now, about the visuals, actually. Let's give this a go. Howdy, children. I'm Spixie, and I've been summoned from the void to come and talk about how a SpongeBob game looks. And oh boy, do you really want to know what I think? Absolutely positive. All right, come here. Come a little bit closer. This game, it looks how plain oatmeal tastes. That's it. I genuinely cannot think of anything else to say about the visuals. They're not horrifically bad, so I can't point and be like, haha, look at how bad it is, everybody laugh. But they're not good either, so I can't praise them. The game looks barely passable and bland. It looks like a license game. It's uninteresting, generic, overly safe. It looks like something you could throw together using a bunch of free Unity assets. And nothing about this game gives me any sort of Spongebob vibes. If you remove the Spongebob characters and told me this is a level from Connect Adventures, I would 100% believe you. It's just a bunch of generic, vaguely tropical themed rivers and streets. Everything looks so samey. I genuinely could not tell whether or not they were reusing the same two levels over and over. The visuals don't have any sort of unique style or flair to them either. I remember how the same company made levels for Creature from the Krusty Krab. So unique and memorable. Even years later, I can still remember how jacked up Spongebob and Patrick looked in Diesel Dreaming, or how disgusting Alaskan Belly Trouble was, or the really cool comic book paper cutout style from the Patrick Man levels. Even Atlantis Scorpantis, which is a game I don't particularly like that much, I still remember it had its own unique little things to it, all while screaming, hey, this is a Spongebob game. There is none of that here. I'm sure it's because of a very minimal budget and they didn't have any real time to work on the game, but it's just sad seeing this boring, forgettable scenery coming from Blitz Games, when five years earlier they managed to make something so unique and genuinely cool all the way back on the PS2 in 2006. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it. It's just bland, boring, and five minutes from now I'm not even gonna remember how the game looked. Alrighty, and now I'm going to return to the darkness from whence I came. Goodbye! 
So the game <clears throat> doesn't look good. It's got clipping textures, it's jittery to look at, the motion is awful, the textures themselves are PS2 level. It tries to hide its awful appearance behind style, but to have style, you've got to follow through with it and giving everything a line around it doesn't make it cell shaded. It makes it look like you went to Photoshop and added a black border. That's not a style, that's stupid. But Blitz has made a SpongeBob game in the past that had an actual style and presence and originality. It was a good few years in the past, but they made Creature from the Krusty Krab, my favorite SpongeBob game on console. It oozed style especially the music. Now, the music in this is pretty underwhelming. I mean, I do love the Blitz soundtracks, but uh, after a point of hearing them again and again, they do start to start to grate in a way. And it kind of gets frustrating because you hear these songs that really, they originated in, uh, you know, Creature from the Krusty Krab, and then you hear them get reused in Atlantis Square Pantus and now reused again. Now, they're not all the same from the previous games. There are some new ones, but they're just really bland. Like as Bixie said, the, it, the blandness extends to the music. It's so bland and stereotypical and boring. Boring and just kind of hurts when I am such a big fan of Creature from the Krusty Krab just to hear these songs slightly remixed but more or less just reused. It's not all just that, but it, it feels like that. And it's, it's, it's barely even a talking point, the music. It's so nothing. Actually, I thought this bad boy has one more left in it. Good morning, Chester. It seems we have a problem. Can you meet me in the garage? This is very important. Thank you. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm gonna meet you in like five minutes. Just come to, it's not that hard. Just come to the, yeah. I know you're busy, but this is, this is a matter of law and order and keeping the peace. So if you could, yeah, I'd be, yes. Thank you, yes. Great. See you soon. You could, you could just tell me that I'm gonna see you in the, I, Okay, bye. Hello. <sighs> Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, I know this is a great inconvenience, I'm sure you have many things to do. Uh, it is quite important, okay? So I just need to let you know. Uh, I, my name is um, Detective Josiah. Uh, I've, I've been in charge, I've been put in charge by the department uh, to, to look into uh, this company called Cool Guy Enterprises. Now I'm afraid, I'm afraid there seems to be some discrepancy with the uh, legitimacy of the, uh, of the uh, um, uh, validity of the company. Um, unfortunately, a couple of lawsuits happening, all right? Now, this doesn't really uh, this doesn't really affect you. I'm um, just letting you know that it's kind of my job, so I've got to let you know. Um, however, you are still under contract, which means that um, I'm afraid you're going to have to keep making videos for them. Okay, right. Um, but if they're like if they're not a legitimate business, then I, I, I can I need to follow the contract, right? Yes, well, you see, I mean, it's my job to look into the company, not you, so you be breaking contract. Uh, however, they they are under investigation, but you're not allowed to break your contract, otherwise, I, mean, I, I don't know, but maybe I'd have to investigate you as well. I don't want to do that, you seem like a pretty cool guy. Um, yeah, so I basically just want to let you know um, this is what's happening. Uh, if you need anything, you know, just call me. Um, there's my number. Um, Yes, so, as per your contract, I believe, uh, somewhere around here, ah, uh, here it is. So what's the actual biggest problem with this game? Other than the terrible art style, the awful controls that don't function, the fact you aren't penalised for anything so that you just become a zombie waiting for it to end, there's none of that. 
It's the fact that this game would be really fun. I'd have enjoyed it if I could play it with a controller and the jumps and tricks required button combinations and if you hit too much you'd have to restart. It's the fact that every time you play this game you know it was created completely in crunch over only a few months for the sole purpose of riding a trend with a DS version made in the back room because it was cheap and easy with a large install base of kids. Every part of this game screams cash grab and missed opportunity. Given us control support, hell, even just released it on the Wii instead of the Kinect, this is a game that could have had an audience, players who enjoyed it, kids who loved it. Just give it a challenge, but no. We get this, which is the cheapest feeling game I have played in a long while. From how janky the cutscenes are, with none of the wider cast lending their voices. Yes, it has some voice acting, cough, cough, Nickelodeon, kart races, but at least that game has working controls. This isn't enough to swing any opinions. It's a visual mess, a technical disaster, and a cash grab through and through. And what's upsetting the most out of all of this is that Blitz made my absolute favorite console SpongeBob game. But this is the bang that they fizzled out with for this IP. And that's a massive shame. It's a place of the imagination. Thank you very so much for watching the CMB Extra video. I'd like to give a, a massive thank you to Zach Pack for being my call center guy. And of course, a massive thank you to Spixy over at Spixy Cafe for her uh, breakdown of the visual stuff and also her amazing drawing of my cool guy and also the horror SpongeBob, which is now my favorite thing ever. I would like that on a t-shirt. Thank you. Check them, their YouTube channels, and their Twitters down in the description below. If you're in need of more CMB Extra content, we do a weekly live stream here with me and my co-host BJ. We chat about a whole bunch of stuff. A bit like a podcast, but it's a fun time. You can throw in your opinions and we all have a big discussion. But if you need more videos like these, there are two coming up in just a second on the end screen. One is a look back at the old Leapster SpongeBob educational games, and another is a retrospective on the main console SpongeBob games. Anyway, thanks everyone so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.